an abandoned child. Ah! A little girl surviving on her own, reviled and shot. Sometimes I feel so invisible. I wonder if I'm here at all. You are. Thanks so much for your time today, Olivia. Really appreciate it. Tell us, what excited you the most about Where the Crawdads Sing? I fell in love with the book when I read it. Um, I was really drawn into Kaya's story. I just thought she was such an incredible character. She's a survivor and a kind of very resilient young woman living through you know, some of the harshest conditions and she manages to find a way to survive and to thrive. And so I was just really touched by her story and excited to film her in the landscape that Delia so beautifully describes in the book. And adapting a book for the screen is a unique challenge, especially one so beloved as Where the Crawdads Sing. What are some of the most important parts of Delia Owen's story that you wanted to give breathing room to in the film? Being a naturalist and a scientist herself, it was really important to me that we understand that Kaya, her connection to the marsh is very special and unique and what she observes and what she learns from her environment. It's key to understanding who Kaya is and how she survives. And so I know that that was so important to Delia in writing the book. And I wanted to make sure that that didn't get lost um, because there is so much uh, to this story. There's also an epic romance and there's a murder mystery. And, you know, um, there are all these other really great genres to play with. But if you want to understand Kaya, you have to understand her connection to nature. What did Daisy Edgar Jones bring to the role of Kaya that made her the perfect choice. Daisy is just a phenomenal actress and I think she's a very wise old soul. And so she can connect to all the different aspects of Kaya's character. I think Daisy understood that Kaya was multidimensional. She was, you know, as a young woman who's very shy and awkward and sensitive, but she's also somebody who, when, you know, put to the task is going to find a way to survive and has a real great strength. And because Daisy has that wisdom beyond her years, I think she was really able to tap into all of those different shades of Kaya. And then you have the a magnificent Jojo Regina as the young Kaya. Where did you find her? She was brilliant. Well, we worked with these wonderful casting director, David Rubin, and he searched high and low for little Kaya. I think he saw about 600 auditions, narrowed it down for us uh, to a smaller group. Wow. Um, and then I worked with Jojo over Zoom. We had a couple of sessions together. And what is phenomenal about Jojo is that she is so empathetic. All she needs to do is imagine being in Kaya's shoes and she could drop right into that emotional space. And she prepares the same way an adult actor prepares. And I was just blown away by her performance. How old was she when filming this film? She turned 10 while we were filming. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. And the Marsh is obviously such a prominent character in the film, but I know it can be very challenging filming in natural surroundings with the light and the animals. And how did you navigate those waters? If you'll pardon the <laughs> pun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very challenging. Um you know, shooting on boats is very challenging because you're not just a picture boat and a camera boat, you're a fleet of boats because all of your departments have to get out to the location, which is in the middle of the water. And of course, we were shooting in a place where there were alligators in the water and lots of venomous snakes. And so animal safety wow. was a very big part of our <laughs> of our production. We had um, animal safety people on every day of our shoots, you know, going around and making sure that they collected all the snakes and then put them back in their environments at the end of the day. It presented all kinds of <laughs> natural challenges for sure. The ratio of women working behind the scenes is really wonderful to see. What did the working set feel like and, and how does that diversity affect the creative process compared to other films that you might have worked on? I'm in a very um, lucky place. Both films that I've worked on have had all female heads of departments. And so for me, it is a natural environment. For whatever reason, I tend to be drawn to other women in, in these roles. For this particular movie, we didn't have a mandate to hire uh, women, but we certainly made sure that all of our lists were diverse. And the people who came forward with the most passion and sort of shared vision for the project just happened to be these incredible um, women. And you know, I think telling a story like Kaya's and creating a space where Daisy could really um, 
feel very at ease and and safe, you know, exploring all of those sides of the character, you know, perhaps was um, made more comfortable by, you know, being surrounded by women who could relate and connect, um, you know, to the experiences that she was trying to convey. We were all there to kind of support the story. And this was filmed uh, mostly during the pandemic too, wasn't it? That must have been challenging. (laughs) Yes, it was. Uh, Shooting in uh, Louisiana in hot months, wearing masks all day, you know, not being able to get too close to one another. It's, it definitely slows down production. Luckily, a lot of the film is set outside. So it was a very safe environment because it was mostly exteriors. One of the challenges and one of many in filming. So we just took it in stride and we never got shut down for COVID. We only got shut down for weather. The sets are incredible too. They were built for purpose, weren't they, In on location? Yeah, it was really important to us that we shoot on location in the marshlands, in the swamps, that, you know, really Kaya's house feels like it's part of the natural world around her. So we chose the location uh, and then built her house um, to fit that location. And do you have a day on set or a memory of making the film that will forever stand out as encapsulating this experience for you? We shot on a lot of different bayous and each one has very different landscape. And so we set specific scenes on specific bayous for different reasons. And we had just shot a scene uh, where Kaya is watching Tate collecting specimens in the water and poor Taylor you know, we were shooting this scene and there was, you know, alligators just swimming <laughs> very close by oh and we were fighting the light and we were trying to get this scene done before sunset. And we did. And then we put Taylor in a boat with Daisy who loved driving the boat and we just filmed them as they rode home. And I just, you know, remember watching these gorgeous shots of them at sunset and seeing them just having so much fun on the boat and just thinking what an incredible job we have that we get to be in this gorgeous environment and, you know, all just experience the joy of being out here and capture it on film. It just felt like one of those out-of-body experiences. And I think that encapsulates how we all feel being able to get back to the cinema and see films like this on the big screen too. Yes. Editing the movie for nine months, I just never got tired of being in Kaya's world. I think it's really transportive. Um, and it's just the this, this setting is so immersive. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that audiences feel the same way that, you know, it's a it's a very special and unique world that you just don't want to end. It really is. Thank you so much for your time today, Olivia. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.